I was watching this YouTube video of this former Japanese TV announcer. Now she's a speech coach, and she was saying that many people ask her, How do I stop talking so quickly? Because people don't understand me because I talk too fast. And what she says in her video is that speed is not the problem, the problem is articulation. Specifically, she says, I'll just show you the clip. <laughs> Yeah, so, so I'm going to break down that whole sentence at the end of the video, so I'll explain what all that means. But then the main content of her video is that she does 10 hayakuchi kotoba. So hayakuchi is like literally fast mouth, she's like speaking quickly. Kotoba is words, so it's fast speaking words. And in English, we might say just tongue twisters. So she does 10 tongue twisters in her video, and uh, they're pretty difficult for me to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one, and we can try to do it together. I think it's the easiest of the 10 she does. But then in the description of this video, I'll write the other nine, and I'll write translations of them too. So you can go watch the original video if you want to practice all 10. Okay, ready? Here is the first one. Niwa niwa, niwa tori ga niwa imashita. Okay, so Niwa is garden or yard, and then Ni wa is just particles, um, the location marking particle Ni, and Wa is the topic marking particle. So Niwa Niwa is just in the garden, and then she's going to say something about that next. And then Niwa Tori, so Niwa Tori is like chicken. Not chicken that you eat. It's like live chicken. I actually said niwatori once in reference to the food chicken. And some of my Japanese friends laughed at me. That was many years ago. So a chicken. And then niwa niwa niwatori ga. So there's just a subject marking particle. It's just, you can think of it as the pointer particle also. It's just pointing out that there's a chicken <laughs> or chickens. Because after that, she says niwa. And so wa is a counter for birds and ni means two. So niwa means two birds. And then imashita is just there were, so it's the past tense of iru. So niwa 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 tori ga niwa imashita is there were two chickens in the yard or in the garden. All right, let's try to say it as fast as she does again. She does it um, once slow, once normal speed, and then once quickly. Okay, I'm going to try to say it at the exact same speed that she does. Niwa niwa niwa, niwa, niwa tori ga. I can say it normal speed pretty easily. But saying it fast is difficult, so maybe I do need this articulation training. Okay, and then the sentence she said I thought was pretty interesting when she explained that you need to work on articulation. She said, それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それ
if I find out a good reason for why she says that, I'll <laughs> put it in the description. But yeah, I don't think she needs to. Just people have their own ways of talking. He says, Yoku is well. Hakiri, clearly. Paki paki to. So, paki paki. <laughs> I love this word. There's so many onomatopoeic words in Japanese. You can imagine that as the sound of like, uh, for example, stepping on some dry branches that are going paki paki. They're crunching. They're crisp. They're like, it's like crisply is, I guess, the translation. Crackling, snapping. I, it's just, she's talking about having clear distinction between each kana that you're saying. So it makes sense that they would be crisp and clear. And then she says, shabereru. Well, well she says, shabereru yo ni nareba. So, shabere is to speak, to chat, and that's in the potential form. So, shabere to be able to speak. And then, yo ni nareba, because yo ni nare means like to become able to do, or to, I'm sure we have a lesson on this. I'm just going to look it up. Some of these things I've taught so many times. Uh, yo ni, yo ni. Um, yeah, I think it's this one. There's a lot, as you can see, of Yoni. I'm on Native Shark, by the way. This is our platform for teaching Japanese. Yeah, you go use it, please. <laughs> so, yeah. V do Yoni Nadu and V Naku Nadu can be used when describing a change in ability, customs, and our conditions, customs, and so on. So, yeah, that Yoni Nadu often comes after a potential form verb, although it doesn't have to, even though I was told that it has to when I was a student for some reason, but it's not the case. And I talk about that in this lesson, but let's just look at one where it does come after potential form because that's what we just saw in our video. Uh, so we have an example sentence you might find in a textbook. Yeah, you see we have 食べられる, to be able to eat. Um, state ni became. So I became able to eat. Konyaka. Which is, I think konyaka is pretty good, by the way. Konyaka. It's one of those words that's hard to say. So that's why she says, shabereru yo ni nareba. And, na, and then nareba instead of narimashita or naru is because that's the ba conditional form. And she's saying, if you learn to speak clearly and distinctly or crisply or however we want to translate that. There are a lot of conditional forms in Japanese. Uh, the ba conditional in particular is has a tendency to be used more than others when it's something that's like hoped for or wished for, some good outcome, like being becoming able to speak clearly and distinctly. And then after that, she says, Hayakuchi demo zenzen kamawanai wa ke desu. So Hayakuchi, what we mentioned earlier, is fast speaking quickly, fast mouth. <laughs> uh, demo even, zenzen. Is just like entirely, totally, completely. Kamawanai is not a problem. It doesn't bother me or anyone. It's not an issue. You pretty much only hear this verb in negative forms like kamawanai and kamaimase. Sometimes people say that when they're telling you like, don't worry about it, it's fine. Kamaimase. Wake this. So she says wake because she's giving another explanation. I said there's a lot of grammar and on Native Shark, we have a lot of lessons on stuff with yoni. We have a lot on wake too, and wake was kind of confusing to me for many years because it's kind of hard to pin down in translations. So wake, I think the one that she just was talking, the one that she's using here is probably this saying wake when you figured something out. Wake is put at the end of a clause when stating a natural or understandable conclusion that has been reached based on some kind of observation. So you're learning Japanese, you found out that there are 2,136 kami use kanji, so you calculate a possible place for learning them all. Pace, not place. <laughs> so that wakeda, uh, re, so wake, yeah, means something like reason, so reason, da, this. That wakeda is included at the end of that sentence because it's just the natural or understandable conclusion that has been reached. In the one that we're studying, she says wake this at the end of her sentence because the natural or understandable conclusion that is reached is that if you can speak clearly and distinctly, then it doesn't matter if you are speaking quickly. Let's hear her sentence one more time. That's it. She might, it might sound like she's talking very quickly, although I do think she has quite good articulation because obviously if you want to try all the 10 different tongue twisters that she does, I'll give a link, I'll put a link to her video in the description. They're pretty fun to do and I think I chose the easiest of the 10. So I wish you luck. <laughs> Thanks for watching this video. Thank you for your time.
この番組はフューチャーラーニングメソッドネイティブシャークがお送りしました。